The problem is not the boxes of photos or, you know, the scrapbook or whatever. That's not the problem. The problem is not the photos. The problem is how- You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Mueller, and it's my mission to equip women to declutter their homes, their time, and their lives so that they can cherish what truly matters. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Decluttering Club podcast. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most requested topics that we get all the time, and that is how to declutter your photos. And when I say photos, I mean specifically printed photos. Photos are such an emotional topic for people for so many reasons, and they cause a lot of grief and a lot of stress and, you know, a lot of overwhelm. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how you can declutter them and how you can get over some of the most common obstacles and challenges that people have. Now, before I get into this, I want to let you know that we are holding a workshop. It's called the Declutter Your Photos Workshop. We're holding this in June, and so you are welcome to join us for that workshop. Uh, There are details uh, in the show notes and also on our website. Okay, so I sent out an email to my list, my email list, and I asked them, what are your struggles when it comes to decluttering your printed photos? And y'all, I got 524 answers in 48 hours. So clearly this is a hot topic. You all want to declutter your photos. You want your photos to be organized, but you are really struggling. This is what you're telling me. And so that's why we're holding this workshop. And that's why I want to do this podcast so I can give you some tools that you can use to solve this problem. Okay. So the the problems that you were telling me about come really can be categorized into three main categories. The first one is you are worried about losing memories, right? You think if you let go of a photo or if you declutter photos, um, you know, and of your loved ones or of special times in your life, you're afraid that you're going to lose the memories that go along with it, right? That's the first problem that you're telling me about. The second problem is that there's a lot of perfectionism that creeps in. So maybe you do want to declutter and get organized, but you get stuck because you have an idea of what you want and you're not quite sure how to get there. And the third problem is overwhelm. Right. And this is such a common one when it comes to decluttering. But if you got a lot of photos, then, and you have, you know, like really big ideas about what they should look like, you may become overwhelmed. You may have a hard time finding the time to work on this. And you may not know how to make a plan. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about here today in this podcast. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the whole idea of the photos, you know, losing the memories when you, let's say, let go of a photo. And this happens sometimes, people, you may have duplicates of photos, but you even have a hard time letting go of those duplicates because you feel like, you know, this photo is my memory, right? Um, So one of the things people say frequently is, if I let this go, I'm not going to have the memory, right? I don't want to let my memories go. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to remember, okay? And if we think this, if this is the thought that we have about decluttering photos, then we would tend to be overwhelmed, right? That makes a lot of sense. And when we're overwhelmed, at least when I'm overwhelmed with this topic, I'm going to probably keep all of those photos. I'm probably going to feel terrible, I'm probably going to not be organized my photos. I'm not going to spend the time to organize them. I'm not going to spend the time to take care of them, maybe to preserve them, maybe to put them in an album or make a photo book, right? I am also going to avoid taking more photos because I don't want to add to the volume. I don't want to add to the mountain, right? Sometimes people do continue to take photos, but then they feel terrible the whole time. Right? And so the result is that I don't allow myself to enjoy those old memories or to preserve them or to create new ones. And this is so ironic when you think about it, isn't it? Because the whole point with photos is to preserve the memories, 
that is the whole reason that we want photos. But yet the way we are thinking about it creates this situation where we explicitly do not do that thing. It's like we're completely working against ourselves. Um, and it's all because of how we're thinking about it. So before we dig in and dive into how to, I really want you to see that the problem is not the photos. The problem is not the boxes of photos or, you know, the scrapbook or whatever. That's not the problem. The problem is not the photos. The problem is how you're thinking about the photos. And when we're thinking in a way that is going to move us forward and is going to serve us, then we can have the result that we want which is we want to have our photos organized, we want to have them manageable, we want to be able to find you know, the photo that we're looking for, all of those kinds of things. So we want to make sure that we're thinking in a way that's going to get us to that result. You may be on board with that. You might be saying, okay, sounds great, but how do I do that? Because I still feel like the memories, my memories are in my photos. Um, but I can prove to you that this is not the case. And let me tell you how this works, okay? So if your memory of an, of an experience, of an event was in the photo, then you'd be able to give me that photo and I could have the same memory. I could look at a photo of, you know, one of your children and I would have the same memory that you do. Now, of course, you know that this is not the case. This doesn't happen. You can't just hand them a photo and then they have that memory. So what that means is that memories are not in photos. Memories do not equal photos. Photos don't equal memories. Okay? Now, photos are a wonderful trigger for memories. Photos are a great reminder of memories. They can be an aid to uh, having something, calling something up inside of your brain. But they're not the same thing. All right, and it's so important that you hear me and that you realize this and that at least start to process this logically. Maybe you don't quite believe it in your heart, but just remember it and, and try to wrap your head around it logically. Because when you do, then you're going to be more able to let go physically. Okay? The photo is not equal to the memory. Um, the other interesting thing about photos is sometimes they're not even that good of a, of a reminder for a memory. Have you ever looked at a photo and you think, well, I don't really know what this photo was all about. I don't know who these people are, or I don't remember what trip this was on. So photos are frequently not a great reminder of the memory. So if that happens, then you just want to remember that and, and be willing to notice that and then let that go. One of the things that happens when we do hang on to, let's say, all photos as a default or maybe lots of photos is that we turn our attention or emphasis to the physical thing. Again, we think it's the thing that I need to take care of. It's the thing that I need to focus on and spend my attention on. Um, and when we're emphasizing and focusing on physical items, things, then we are giving less attention to the experiences, to the thoughts in our head, which is very ironic when you think about it. Because again, really what we want is we want to have that memory. We want to get back to that, you know, that time. We want to be able to remember what happened. Um, but when we're really focused on the physical, then we can't focus on the, you know, on the, on the things that actually happened. Um, we can't remember. Okay, so it's really interesting that it happens. So I want you to really notice, again, that the memories are not in your photos, okay? So it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to be easy for you to let go of a photo, especially if your habit has been to keep them and to just put them in a box, right? It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy, but it can be easier and you can get practice at letting go. You just need to remind yourself, my memory is not in that photo, um, and what's really interesting is that when we do take the time to declutter the photos and get them organized and preserve them, then we can enjoy those memories so much more than we can right now when we have boxes and boxes and boxes of photos. It is fascinating. Okay. So now that maybe you are with me on the idea that the memory is not in the photo, now what do we do? Okay. Now we can address the question of perfectionism. 
Because again, if these photos are very, very important to you, there's probably a lot of pressure built up. There's probably a really high expectation for, you know, doing some wonderful things with them. And when we have these really big lofty goals, frequently we can freeze up, we can panic, we can, you know, overthink, you know, the whole topic and, um, and then we don't do anything, right? We, again, which takes us further away from our goal instead of getting us closer to it. So if you are experiencing some perfectionism when it comes to your photos, here's what I want you to do. First, I want you to think about what is it that you want to create here? What is your goal for these photos? Is your goal to, you know, just remember a few happy moments? Is your goal to document, you know, like a particular stage in, in someone's life? Is your goal to document a, a, a trip that you went on or a holiday? Like figure out what actually do you want? Because depending on what you want um, is going to help you determine what you do with those photos. Um, there are no wrong answers here. This is the good news. You may have an idea of what you want, um, but that is for you to decide. You get to decide what this looks like. And maybe you had done it a certain way in the past and you, you know, you'd always, let's say, created a scrapbook and you'd put a lot of time into it, but that doesn't have to be the way that you do the next project or the next one. It doesn't have to mean anything terrible. It doesn't mean that you have failed if you don't continue to create scrapbooks in the same way. And I think sometimes we forget this. We think, well, this is the way I have done it. And so if I don't continue to do it this way, then it's, it's a total disaster. It's just not the case. Um, I want you to decide if you're willing to pay the price. Okay. And I talked about this in a previous episode. Um, I call, I, I gave you the example of a puppy. Let's say someone shows up at your door with a puppy. And they say, you know, look at this puppy. I've got you this puppy. And you think, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It'd be so exciting to have a puppy. I love puppies. It's just adorable. You know, and all of these possibilities come up when you think about having a puppy. But most people are not just going to say, bring it on in and I'll keep it. Most people are going to think, you know what? Yes, very cute. But also, I don't know if I want to pay the price in terms of time and attention and work that would be required of me if I say yes to this. You know, I'm going to have to take it out. It's going to chew up my shoes. Uh, it's going to need a lot of food. It's going to have to get walked, right? And we, we think about the cost, the price that we would have to pay to say yes to that. Now, it's easy to think of that when you think about puppies, but we forget that when we think about other projects in our life. Right? So you may say, I love the idea of doing this wonderful, elaborate project with these photos, but I want you to ask yourself, do, am I willing to pay that price? Right? Do I want to do all the things that are involved in, in creating that project? Um, and if it's very involved, then maybe the answer is no. Actually, I'm not willing to pay that price. Maybe you've done that in the past, or maybe you just wanted to do that in the past, but maybe you decide, you know, using accurate thinking, and you decide, you know what, this is not worth it to me. I don't want to do that. If it's causing you a lot of stress because you're, you're making this into a bigger project than you really are willing to commit to, then why not try that out? Why not go for something different? You might actually find that once you look at this without judgment, that you can come up with a better option that's easier, right? That the price is smaller, like the, the figurative price is less. It requires less of you and you like it more. And most importantly, you'll get it done. That is the most important thing, right? It's no good to be planning on doing a scrapbook for 10 years if you're just never going to spend the time to do it. It'd be much better and you would enjoy it so much more to do something different that you can actually be able to finish. So I really want you to be aware of the price that you are asking of yourself and then be willing to change that, right? Because again, so many of you, I see this over and over again, you have really big goals, um, but then you don't want to put the work in. And so then you let those goals sit and sit and sit, and then you're really unhappy with yourself for not taking action. So I say, if that's the case, let's just pick a different, you know, let's pick a different vehicle. Let's pick a different plan that you are willing to spend the time on. Um, and then 
you can have what you want, which is a way to enjoy and preserve and organize those photos. And you can get to your goal and then you can move on. All right. Part three. Part three. Now we're going to get into the overwhelm and the making of a plan. Okay. Whenever you are overwhelmed, and again, this is very common with photos. If you find yourself being overwhelmed, what I want you to do is zoom in. Okay. I want you to zoom in. So maybe you're looking at boxes and boxes of photos. Um, instead of that, I want you to zoom in and, and you, you can ask yourself, what can I do in the next 10 minutes to get me one step closer to finishing this job? Like what is the very next thing? And the more overwhelmed you are, the more I want you to zoom in. Okay. And maybe that is just, you know, taking out a piece of paper and, you know, making your plan moving forward. Right? You don't even have to touch the photos. In fact, I highly recommend that you do make a plan. Now, what does your plan look like? What or what could your plan look like? Well, I suggest that you create what I call a protocol. What is a protocol? A protocol is a set of rules that you decide on. These are your rules, not mine, not anyone else's. But there's a set of rules that you're going to follow um, in different circumstances. So you may have a protocol for, you know, if I have duplicate photos. This is what I'm going to do, right? You decide up front in advance how you're going to handle those duplicates. And then all you have to do when you run into duplicates is follow your protocol. This is the beautiful thing. You could have a protocol for duplicate photos. You can have a protocol for blurry photos. You would have a protocol for people, for photos with people that you do not recognize, right? And you can decide all of these things up front and then sorting the photos is going to be so much easier because you're just going to follow the rules. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I highly recommend that you spend some time creating protocol, and that's something that we're going to be doing in the Declutter Your Photos workshop. Now, you also want to decide what is the end result I have in mind here. Do I want an album? Do I want uh, you know a box of photos with categories? Do I want to create a photo book? Do I want to digitize them, right? Decide what you want before you get started. And then you can just identify what are all the questions I need to answer and what are all the steps I need to take. And then you literally just follow them one at a time. Okay. And I'm not going to say it's not a lot of work because it might be a lot of work, right? Again, depending on how many photos you have and, um, you know, the steps that you have decided on, but that is literally all you need to do to get from where you are right now to having finished your goal, okay? Um, having support and a plan and community is going to be vital towards you uh, executing on this goal and finishing, right? And, you know, again, it may be a good amount of work, but I promise you it's going to feel so good when you are done. I highly encourage you to dig into your photos if this is important to you, um, Keep it simple. Start with a small project. Maybe you just do a small album or a small photo book to get started and then see if you like it. You may discover you love doing things that way. And then you're going to be off to the races, right? And again, it's all because of how you're thinking about it. All because of that. And I really want to help you change your attitude towards the photos so that you can see them as, you know, wonderful aids for your memory but not a substitute, right? Your, again, remember, your memories are not in your photos. What that means is you can let the photo go. The photo is just a piece of paper with some ink on it, right? It's not the memory itself. The memory lives on in your head. And the important thing to remember is that the, the better organized your photos are, the more access that you're going to have to those memories, so go out and organize those photos, my friends, declutter them, and um, enjoy. All right? That's what I have for you today. I'll talk to you soon. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this podcast, would you leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts? It would really help us get the word out. To start your decluttering journey, go to thedeclutteringclub.com forward slash start. That's the T-H-E decluttering club.com forward slash start.